I had a guy call me from LA uh, uh, and him and I are having this conversation together. He says, look, do you have any interest of ever getting into the mortgage business? I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> he's, he's the top mortgage guy in LA, in Glendale. He says, do you have any interest of getting into the mortgage business? And I, I said, I'm good, man. I don't have any interest in business. That, well, you know, when, when it's doing so well, you can make so much cash. I'm not interested in cash. I'm interested in equity. I'm interested in building the company. He says, so he says uh, the following to me, flat out. What I liked about him is he had zero. He says, Pat, I don't care what anybody's telling you. This is a different guy than the other guy I spoke to. He says, mortgage refi business is down 90%. Mm-hmm. 90% is down. We're doing no refis. We're doing none of that stuff. Do you have the Yahoo Finance article about Las Vegas, how Las Vegas uh, Board of Realty, they asked him, they said, so what's happening with, because you know, the way to judge it is to find out the Board of Realty in each city and state and how they're doing. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times they judge it based on Las Vegas. So watch this article here. If you can zoom in a little bit more so we can read it a little bit more, a little bit more. Okay. Housing market activity. This is from six days ago. Housing market activity is crashing and it threatens to push U.S. into recession just like it did in 81 and 2008. Now go up. If you look at the data where it talk, there you go in the middle. Zoom in a little bit. Las Vegas is one of the leading indicators for home price action in the housing market like we saw in 2008. And the frenzy. Uh, Recent frenzy, we are absolutely feeling the heat here. The buyer pool has, for the most part, dried up, says real estate agent in Las Vegas to uh, Fortune. Go a little lower. Go a little lower because now they're talking. Go keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Story continues. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Uh, Right there, right there. Realtors are feeling it big time as well. I put a call into the Greater Las Vegas Association of Realtors, an employee I spoke with said that they are averaging, uh, they were averaging 300 new members every month, which means like 300 new realtors uh, every month. This month, she has estimated 120. However, she's been processing about 30 realtor withdrawals a day. Not a week, a day. That's 900 negative. Um, A month, Tom. Wow. That means every day around 30 real estate agents in Las Vegas alone are calling it quits. Okay? And if you go a little lower, she'll talk about the fact that 38% is down. Uh, look for the number 38%. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Uh, uh, anyways, there's a 38% number about what's happening with the refi business. So uh, it, it's a very interesting market we're in right now. Different economies are feeling it. People are feeling it. But a, a lot of times people are who don't want to uh, t- talk about what's really going on with the market, all they're talking about is unemployment. And the unemployment numbers are going to be felt next year, not this year. person asked me a question on Twitter and Jed, you were asking me this question. I'll say this and then we'll toss it around to the rest of you guys. Is this a good time to buy? Mm-hmm. And my advice is very simple. If you're thinking about buying a house today, buy a house today. But make the offer you would make a year from today. So if you're buying a million-dollar home, make a 770 offer. If you're buying a $600,000 home, make a 490 offer. If you're buying a $450,000 condo or home in certain parts of the country, make a 370 offer. But do not make the offer you would make in today's economy because there's still room, I believe, for these values to go down the next 12 to 18 months. Yeah, Zillow is showing, you know, this is the the average run-up of the last year. And so we don't want to say the address or anything on here, but you can take a look at that, Pat. You see that lump? That skyrocket right there over the last 12 months is an illusion. So you have five years of some modest growth, 2 3%, just growing along. See there? And all of a sudden, wham, we print money, the asset changes so let's go take a look at this house what was it uh you know uh, october of 21 uh 1.3 yeah so right now it's at 1.8 it was 1.3 and then go back to october 20 880 see that where it's where it had been there it is so if you were going to go buy this house right now you would go go in there and say probably 1.1 that's you know, exactly what I'd be making a million that's dollar a, offer on that. That's exactly your your advice, Pat, is absolutely true. I look at it, I look at it this way. I, I did a little research for some numbers or some basic numbers. I'll do this really quick. Right now, let's say someone is buying a five hundred thousand dollar house. Just that's it. And you're gonna do a 30 year fixed and you're gonna put 20% down. So standard, standard deal. In March of this year, you would have had a three and a half percent mortgage or an eighteen hundred dollar payment reasonable you know for a family right now at 7.5 percent that's twenty eight hundred dollars up a thousand dollars at 10.25 percent where you and i both think this is going 
it's double, $3,600. Oh, it's going there. So the buyers are, are being crushed. Now let's go the other way. Let's say the 1800 was all that I could afford as a buyer. When the interest rate's at 7.5, the $500,000 house I can afford, I can only afford a $325,000 house. So my buying power is down almost 40%. So what you have right now, if you are out there and you have to change jobs, you're being forced to go to another city right now, I would seriously consider not <clears throat> dumping the house you have, lease the house you have, because you're, you're, going, you're not going to be able to sell it right now. You're, 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 and the, the price is going to come back down. But where you're going, <clears throat> the interest rates are so high. So if you sell, where do you go and what do you buy? Your, your payments you, you know, up. You know what confuses me is the following. Those who are delusional because they're in the industry and they're saying that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. There's a very big difference between power of positive thinking and not understanding that the only the paranoid survive. <laughs> it, it, I believe you should read both books simultaneously. Read the book Power of Positive Thinking because it's good to have a positive attitude. But do not be delusional because you're in real estate and mortgages thinking, no, it's not going to happen. Year ago, rates were roughly 2.9%. In May, when Dave Ramsey called it fear porn, rates were at 5%. And today rates are seven and a half percent for thirty year interest. Interest, and everyone's saying it's not going to go to seven and a half. Never. What are you talking about? Do you realize from nineteen eighty one or eighty two? I don't know what their year was. For about nine years straight, interest rates in America were above ten percent. Yep. Can you pull that up, please? Do you realize for ten, this is the part where people are absolutely delusional? Go to the rates I sent you. No, it was one that just showed the charts. There you go. That's the one. Yeah, this is okay. Paul Volcker's so, Endless so, Halloween. So check this out. Zoom in. Zoom in so everybody can see. Let's first look at the first chart to the right, which what we've been used to for the last 20 years. Yeah, go to the right. No, no, don't worry about the stuff on the left. Okay, so what is it right now? Go a little lower. Go a little lower. Lower. Okay, 2021, 2.96. 2010, 3. 39, 4, 5, 39, 3, 6, 3, 8, 4, 1, 3, 9, 3, 6. Oh, rates are cool. Mm -hmm. This is what we're used to. This is BS. This is a lie. Four, 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 six, five. This is a lie. Then it's real. Six, six, six. Keep going. Six point three, six point four. Go to twenty uh, two thousand and five. To okay, five eight, five eight, five eight. These are numbers that we need to stay around. Six five, six nine, eight. Now watch. This is two thousand. We're at eight. Seven four, six nine, seven six, seven eight, seven nine. It's eight three seven three for a straight decade. It's around seven plus, right? Mm -hmm. Now you got nineteen ninety. Just thirty two years ago, it's at ten point one three. It'll never crack ten percent. It won't happen. Okay, go to nineteen eighty nine. Let's look at eighty nine. Now watch what happens. So that's two years, three years, four years, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Keep going. Eleven, twelve, twelve straight years. 30-year fixed rates were above 10%. Crazy. Let me say this one more time. For 12 straight years, 30-year mortgage rates were above 10%, and people are saying it's not going to go to 10%. Brace for impact, folks. Read Power of Positive Thinking and read Only the Paranoid Survive. Long-term, everything's going to be fine. Short-term, these rates are going to get to 10 points. I hope I'm wrong. Believe me, because I'm trying to also participate. I've taken a hit on a few of the properties I bought. I hope I'm wrong. But it's going this direction. And right now, what's really interesting also, uh, right now, today, I think it was uh, Diana Olek on um, CNBC reported. She's the um, uh, real estate reporter. Tends to be pretty balanced, not sold out to the industry. Um, the listings are up 36% year over year. So listings are coming on right now as sellers are trying to get in, a certain class of seller trying to get in and sell the house to somebody, God, please, somebody buy my house right now. And you have the interest rates here. So I think that the last, we've had the interest rates go up. We've had the housing start stall. We've had the purchases from builders like Toll Brothers saying nobody's walking in to buy, so they're stuck with inventory. All of those things have happened. The next thing's about to happen, price. Just think of supply and demand. The supply is up 36% over last year, yet the buyers have lost 34% of their buying power. The next oh shoe God. to drop is the price. And I used to say, hey, I've been saying, and if people have been listening to the podcast, you've heard me talk about real estate and the economy, saying next June. Now I'm saying next October. So I was looking at the beginning of Q2. Now I'm looking at the beginning of Q3, where I think that window is going to be open, where the rates are going to be coming back a little bit, and you're going to have a, an opportunity. But between now and then, you're going to have to, if you got to move, then you, 
Don't put yourself in a bad purchase. Find a way to lease, lease a lot less, and just get through the storm. Think about the stress on people's minds, though, going into these midterms. I mean, all of these topics we just talked about, buyers, stressed out, renters, by the way, very stressed out because the rental market in a lot of these desirable places, including places like Florida, rents have gone up. Sure. People go to the grocery store, they can't afford the prices of goods and services. Inflation has been probably the biggest thing that people can actually feel tangibly every day, as you said, with your wife at the grocery store. There's all these headlines that say the recession is coming and people are like, we're not there yet. I'm feeling every day like mm. I'm struggling. They are already feeling yep. like they're there. And now they're thinking, well, if the bad's not here yet, what's that going to look like for me and my family? family. And I think the only hope for people is a shift in politics. They look and they say, okay, is there going to be a shift here that's going to change things? The midterms, I think, will be a GOP pretty pretty intensive sweep we're going to see. I mean, it's even interesting to look at the New York race. I don't know how many people are following Hochul and um, Lee Zeldin, but Lee Zeldin is actually in the lead, the Republican, in some polling there. It's that's insane. That's insane. You see that happening in New insane York. Insane in New York State. A race that should never be that close. Right. <laughs> so there's going to be a shift, but then people look and say, well, if there's a shift in the midterm, sometimes then there's backlash in the next presidential election against the midterm. So I just feel the stress of people all the time. And when I get, you know, reach out from people on social media, they're always like, where, what do people do who don't have a cushion? You know, it's one thing to go through times like this when you have a cushion. What if you're, you, you don't have that? You've got your one home and you're trying to relocate and you, you do need to sell it. Like there's just too much going on that people feel like they're backed into a corner. And I think ultimately though, I think stock market aside, all that aside, I think it's going to be the price of goods and services because you can't get from today to tomorrow if you can't pay for the stuff that's in the grocery store and put gas in your car. That's going to be the leading issue, the inflationary issue. And I don't know what Democrats are going to say when you look going into these midterms. I mean, we're very close. It's coming up next week. I don't know what they could possibly say that would go against the reality that people are facing. I mean, the reality is people are hurting and when people are hurting, they want to change regardless whether, you know, you can put all the blame on the Democrats or what they're going to say, let's change something. Maybe that'll make it better. So I think Republicans are in for a pretty extraordinary win next week across the board. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.